Um, and today's sounds, what are today's sounds? Well, actually, let me tell you that right now. It's um, the most recent episode of Drone Sound TV, or sorry, Drone uh, Drone Somnia, which is basically uh, my live handmade uh, drone sound set. That's once a week on Tuesdays right here on Drone Sound TV as well. It's basically like Drone Sound TV, except it's manually operated by me. Drone Sound TV, where is it? Um, I was supposed to have a test kit on Friday. We're going to talk about the delays in that and where I think I'm going. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, schemes for, uh, for a, a test uh, kit and uh, talk about how I was thinking about doing that. So the question was, what do we pursue first? Hmm, test kit delay. Well, I really should own up to that. So I was hoping, really hoping, and I set a deadline for myself. So I was uh, hoping to provide the capability for people to at least test some of the, so the core features, uh, for example, like the um, expletive uh, handling, you know, bands you if you cuss, that kind of stuff. Cuss word detection and all the other features and the sub back bot and the crazy custom shot outs and custom commands and custom layouts and stuff. My original plan was to offer um, a subset of these features that mm, are most attractive to really active YouTube live streamers. So um, one of them is the, uh, you know, handling cuss, cuss words and stuff and making it easy to on board. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward to add. Layout stuff a little bit more difficult because of the way that I'm currently doing it, but i uh, thinking about changing that too. When I look off stream, uh, off screen, I'm, I'm reading my notes is what's happening here. Okay, so my scheme for this, uh, and again, I'm referring only to this uh, more basic subset um, that addresses mostly uh, chat-based issues. Um, if you want to know all the stuff that uh, um, Jerome bought, which is really, as I said, stage ghost, if you want to know all the stuff it does, you can uh, check out the stream, like I said. And, uh, for example, I'm typing it on my uh, tablet right here. You can type commands uh, in the chat, and the bot will tell you what commands are available. So, as you can see, that's what it's done. And uh, in a, you know, a little while, a couple of cycles, we'll see, um, we'll see it appear on the screen in various parts of the interface, too. Um, so um, it does a bunch of different stuff. Uh, there's been a bunch of shows about that. I was just reading the status on it. Somebody set the filter to 2600, and I think that's cool. <laughs> um, going with the plan uh, to offer a subset of these uh, actually really eases it quite a bit. And I thought we might talk about the YouTube OAuth flow and how that relates to how I would offer uh, demo capabilities. How should I do that? I can like draw it on the screen, right? I have to edit the crap out of this to make it useful. Fortunately, no one's watching. <laughs> Luckily for me, no one watches my show. Uh, let's see. All right. Yeah, there's a traditional model for doing that, for doing this, right? You know, you got uh, like three tiers or whatever in the cloud and you know and then like they would go to there and then all the code would run on there and it would interface with the YouTube API right um, yeah and I know that and this is basically what I'm doing except instead of the cloud this is a this is a Raspberry Pi right but so it's basically the same thing and the stack is on the Raspberry Pi itself like the whole thing with the exception of the um, with the exception of the video streaming stuff which you guys know you know what we've covered I'm trying to see if you can even see that diagram absolutely not okay great what was I thinking that all right <clears throat> but it's um, you might have gotten it from the description anyways um, so in, in the course of this in the course of this proce process you know like the user right you uh, you present them basically with a um, with a form. It's essentially a form um, and that includes your your token, right? So you, as a developer, you have a token that you've gotten from YouTube, right? They give you this token. They said, "Hey, hey, use this token in order to request uh, for permissions on behalf of a user to do stuff on behalf of a 
user, right? So the question becomes like, where do you serve this, right? Where do you serve this form from? And, and, and yeah, you know, there has to be like a way to communicate the results of this transaction back to your, you know, server side processes. As server side, I say, on, in our case, it's Raspberry side, right? Raspberry process, <laughs> Raspberry side process. So anyways, hey, I have a viewer. Hey, hello viewers, or it's probably just someone who got lost. Um, uh, let's see, so anyways, YouTube, uh, YouTube's gonna assign you this, right? It's your developer key. Uh, this is static and it doesn't change, right? So um, you, you can't, obviously, you can't just like hand this over to the user, so you need to provide this interface, right? For them to do this, and as I said, typically you would do this on a server in the cloud, or in my case, I intend to do it directly from the Raspberry Pi. And like, wait, how would you do that? Then a Raspberry Pi would have to run, uh, you know, a dub 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 server, right? So like Apache and stuff, which I don't intend to do. Furthermore, users would be communicating directly with the Raspberry Pi that runs the stream. And I don't want that, right? Because not all users look like this. Some of them look like this, right? And so you don't want those users communicating directly with your Raspberry Pi. So instead, instead, right? Um, and since we've already got, you know, the Pi is basically taking on the role of the server here, and it's uh, doing all the interaction with YouTube. As I've covered in previous discussions about this project, it's doing it all via the YouTube API, right? Um, probably completely illegible. Anyways, hopefully the description adds a little something to it. So this is your Pi right here, and that's a YouTube. And it, it's doing all of this interaction, you know, that comes up in the chat. Um, via the YouTube API. Um, so, in, instead of one, since, since it's YouTube's job to handle this interaction with the chat, and one of the things you've already seen uh, probably in the project that, that it leans on is, like, instead of me limiting the, like, the activity, like, amount of activity that users can do, I don't throttle it. I just let YouTube's chat throttle it. They already handle that, right? So I don't have to worry about that stuff. And yeah, users could theoretically bypass that, but we don't go down there. Now, the main thing is that I'm considering this, this chat thing, is the interface, right? So this way, I never have to deal with this situation. I never have to deal with, like, the bad guy interacting directly with the bot. And also, I'm not using a, a cloud, right? I'm not bothering with that either, and there's no servers. I'm, I'm basically leaning on YouTube to be my infrastructure. That's what I'm doing. So rather than, like, thinking, you know, I'm um, going to use like a server in the cloud and, you know, these are the features that I want. Instead, like I built it using this model and said, what features can I do if I restrict myself to just using YouTube, YouTube chat as my server platform, essentially. So, um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, essentially I was talking about before, how you're going to have your developer uh, key from assigned from YouTube. Uh, that I can keep safely on my Pi here. Uh, I'll present the user with the uh, OAuth, uh, with the OAuth authentication form. I'll present them with it via the YouTube chat. So I can give them a link to that, right? And have them actually um, get the results. This is the tricky part, will be to get the results back to the Pi. And then the process is on the Pi, uh, i.e. drone bot, right? Drone bot uh, will have access to do YouTube stuff on behalf of that user, i.e., you know, monitor their channel for cuss words and all the other cool stuff that you get with the uh, drone bot. That diagram is completely illegible and uh, this pen is like, almost completely out of ink. That's what it is. Alright, so we also learned that uh, next time we'll use my uh, whiteboard. I have a whiteboard. It's about this big. It would have been ideal for this. So um, that's where we're going with that and that's actually what's taking longer to uh, to release a beta test version than, uh, than you would think. But when I do, uh, the access to it will be simply by going to the uh, channel. And then, uh, and I don't know, there'll be like some demo come in. You'll say like, sign me up for demo. And it will present you with a URL and you'll click the URL and uh, the rest we described in the diagram. So like I said before, this is the third time that I have reviewed this magazine and YouTube 8 the other two versions of that show, of those shows. So, uh, 
So I think we're going to rest of it. In short, um, yeah, uh, you probably should get it. I mean, if you're a Trekkie geek, you know, obviously it's not like, you know, uh, the canon stuff. It's not Star Trek magazine or anything. Um, it's uh, Time magazine, and it's a special edition. But um, it's Star Trek, and it has the original crew on the front. So, I mean, who, what geek is not going to get that? Anyways, uh, high points include, um, I thought, among them, let's see... Uh, Starship Field Guide. Now, obviously, this isn't comprehensive. It's two. It's a two-page spread, but uh, I still thought it was kind of cool. Any Starship, any field guide to the Starships, we we'll like all of them. Yes, I'm very serious. Uh, they do have a timeline. It's not comprehensive, uh, but it's it's amusing. Those are always fun timelines. Um, I said that they have actually a focus. They had a focus somewhere in here, or was it specifically on Leonard Nimoy? Because, of course, he just passed and we miss you, Leonard. And uh, let's see. Oh, that's a nice shot. See, that's really what you get these for. This is uh, nice reproductions and stuff. They talk about aliens. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, so we're going to cover this. All right, Time Magazine. All right, editors of Time Magazine, this is for you. I do take exception actually, to one thing. Your assertion that if Donald Trump were a Star Trek alien, that he would bury a Ferengi. Okay. <laughs> I really have to object. And I don't think there's anything partisan about this. This is about um, respecting the Ferengi culture because no Ferengi would allow himself to continue alive if he had declared bankruptcy four times. It just, even once, I just don't think that they would ever permit it. So, and, and definitely Brunt, FCA, would not be permitting it. And, uh, and Quark, you know, his picture here, I'm sure would be quite offended, which is, he I mean, look at the f look on his face. He's like, are you kidding? I mean, I might be orange, but I, I, I'm not bad with money. How dare you, right? So, no, just want to Trump would not be a, a Ferengi. Um, but I'm not going to enter into what he might be. Um, <laughs> Maybe you out there in the viewing audience would be interested in undertaking that task. If you are, then uh, drop a message in the comments on the video or wherever. Or drop me a note on Twitter, DiamasterMonkey, um, and elsewhere. I know DiamasterMonkey as well. Um, let's see, I think I, I teased like a whole bunch of potential topics in the show. So let me see how long we've been going. Man, only 30 minutes. It's always, it's always harder than you think. Trust me, you try. All right, let's get back to the uh, topics. Let's get Jim. Now I'm standing at the beat station. Oh, um, by the way, I, I just uh, I just released uh, a quick, um, a very short, it's like two minutes of video that shows where all of this happens. Kind of step back and I show you where. Uh, what gear is involved in, and stuff, and you, you kind of get to see some of the projects that you don't really see because um, they're not they're not done yet. But there are stages. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Yeah, I did get through talking about my schemes for a, a demo setup and how I'll do that without using any infrastructure whatsoever, which I think is cool. I'm mostly just doing it for the kicks. I mean, yeah, you can get to your cheaper resources and stuff, but that's not my point. Um, IQ Zero, I teased that I might dig into that, but it's a whole thing. It's a really interesting story, though, um, both where it's been and where it's going. Um, I wrote bug bounties. I'm like, we could work on bug bounties. I've done that once or twice on Twitch, and every time I do, like, people come out of the woodwork. It's crazy. So I'm, like, sometimes hesitant to do that. And that's basically just where I work on some of the bug bounties I'm working on on screen. Um, and it, it's also kind of dangerous because I'm trying to like not show things that are dangerous, but still like teach. It's I don't know. So I, I still have to work on how we do like a bug bounty show. I thought it'd be fun, but it can. It, it's a little spooky still. So I said code. I said we might talk. We might fix the mix command. The mix command is a good example of, of basically why I've built uh, Drumbot uh, the way that I have. <coughs> But um, it's got a bug, and uh, I was thinking I might fix that. 
I could do beats. Um, I mean, you show up in, ah, you show up in your game for beats, just let me know, because that's kind of what I do by default, anyways. See, like I'm already killing it now. In the background, again, as a reminder, uh, you're listening to a replay of last week's uh, Drone Somnia. Drone Somnia. Drone Somnia. Uh, which is my weekly uh, uh, handmade drone show. And uh, so if you dig what you were hearing, then you should you should come back for that. That's on, as I said, uh, uh, what did I say? It's Tuesdays, uh, 11 p.m. PST for Drone Somnia. And uh, we, you will be welcomed back by Cowboy Mike. And the girl with no name. He's killing time. Yes, he is. I'm like, uh, trying to figure out whether or not to continue the show. Give me a second here. I'm back. So, um, yeah, I broke most of the cameras. Right. So, or maybe I should use this view now. What was that? Uh, it must be from the last set. because apparently I'm in the mood to do that. I think I've talked myself out, though. I could work on that bug in the next command. And that's kind of interesting, because uh, then you'd get to see the code. But actually, if you turn into, tune into Drone Sound TV, and I've talked about this elsewhere. Oh, the diagram. I took the diagram away. Hold on. Okay, there's the diagram. Um, you can get the diagram, it's in the disc, there's a link to it in the description anyway, so check that out. But uh, I want to highlight this part in the middle right here that says user commands. So all of the commands in the chat, including like the commands command, that you type commands and it tells you what commands are available. Um, all of those are, are commands that um, are uploaded from user space, so to speak. So they're user provided commands that are actually uh, enabled, you know, uploaded and enabled from the chat. I haven't really exposed these features yet <laughs> much, um, but uh, that's almost like at this point, 90% of Drone Sound TV is run by user space commands that are uploaded directly from chat. So it's like I'm trying to get it down to where it's just the bare bones bot that you install and all of the extra stuff like the mix command and the theme command and the mood command. All of those commands, they're all user space commands that I added from chat. And they're very simple scripts. And so the idea is not to get into some sort of race adding commands to bots because I don't want to I don't I don't like entering races this is not how I do it the, the idea is to provide a capability so that it's endlessly expandable by end users themselves and then to make that capability you know easily accessible uh, to everybody that way you know they win the race is my, my scheme that's always my scheme you know so that's like a recurring theme in all of my projects Okay, so, anyways, I think I'm pretty tapped out. Um, should I get the... Yeah, at least for sign-off, I should put the, the uh, face cam back on. So, anyways, uh, yeah, these, these shows are a bunch of work, like, for me, at least. One thing is, you know, um, I'm actually not a very social person. Not even just in real life, like even in digital life, I'm just not, I've got a lot on my mind usually. I actually started these geek sessions um, uh, specifically to help my, 
help expand that, you know, help address that, force myself, you know, out into, um, into the public more, in a sense. Um, and my workout, too, actually started thinking, you know, if I don't share any of this, if other people can't use any of it, what's the point? Um, oh, thanks for that, by the way, Lady Ada. One of, your, one of her videos was kind of instrumental in uh, getting me to look at that, really rethink that. Anyways, this diagram, again, you can find over at, uh, at you know, Drone Sound TV, which is um, on YouTube. Just search YouTube for Drone Sound TV. And uh, this link will be among the links in the description. There's also a link to um, uh, the latest user guide, which you can also get in the, um, in the chat itself using the RTFM command. Um, and uh, so if you did tune in live or during the replay, uh, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that and I uh, hope that I gave you something interesting. And uh, if not, let me know how I can next time. And um, that's about going to do it for this one. As um, as we always say here, stay true, stay low, monkey out. Oh, uh, also, uh, it sounded like I said go away. No, don't go away because... Uh, We'll now be uh, continuing with the regularly scheduled Drone Sound TV. By the way, if you tune in late, uh, you can actually rewind because the, uh, the live stream, you can rewind like, uh, I'm sorry, you know, like eight hours or something. Also, you can replay it um, in like half speed, which is really fun. So like you should try playing these live streams in half speed. They're funny. Anyways, all right, that's my tip for the day. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to, uh, as always, to new people, old people, and uh, to Lurkers, uh, Lurkers Power the Channel. And we are done. Stay tuned for Drone Sound TV.